Hello, Kevin sir. It's okay to start the webinar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can start. Yeah. So, for today's webinar, I welcome you all for this English Language Teachers Association very proudly announces today's 116th webinar, which is on to AI or not to AI, leveling the playing field in an ELT classroom. And as a resource person, we have with us Dr. Anej Somraj, sir. He is currently he is serving as the assistant professor and research guide, Department of English, Christian College, Changapatnam. And as a moderator of this webinar, we have with us Dr. Santo Chautaiwale, who is a professor and head Department of English, Indra Raj College, Silor. And for his Today's webinar, we are going to start with the promo video of the English Language Teachers Association. I request uh, Kevin, sir, to please have a promo of ELTI. Thank you so much, Kevin, sir. Now I'm going to introduce today's moderator, Dr. Santos Chauthaiwale. He's an academician, researcher, and writer. He has 15 years of teaching experience. He has published 85 research papers and presented more than 100 research papers in international and national seminars. Under his noble guidance, 11 students have successfully completed PhD research. He has completed two minor research projects and published two books. At present, he is the board of study member of Dr. Babasai Ambedkar Maratwada University, 
Maharashtra and also served as the area coordinator of NSS, National Service Scheme of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Maratwada University, Maharashtra. And at present, he is professor and head department of English, Indra Raj College, Sillor, and also the uh, coordinator of the English Language Teachers Association, Chhatrapati Sambhajinagar chapter. Now, I request Honorable uh, Dr. Santosh Chauthai Wale, sir, to uh, do the further proceedings. Honorable Chauthai Wale, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Ranjanikar, sir. I'm here to introduce today's speaker. Today's speaker, eminent speaker, Dr. N.H. Somraj. Uh, it's my privilege to give the brief introduction of the today's speaker. Dr. N.H. Somraj's educational qualification is MA English MPhil PhD. He has successfully completed his education from English Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. Senta University of Cambridge, UK. At present, he is working in the capacity as assistant professor in the senior scale. Also, he has responsibility of research supervisor in the Department of English, Christian College, Chennagu. Previously, he was head of the curriculum NSQF, that is an accreditation additional skills acquisition project Government of Kerala in the year 2021 to 2023. Sir has designed and developed and aligned numerous courses with the NSQF that is accredited by NCVET, which are eligible for credits through academic bank credit under the National Education Policy Implementation. He was served as assistant professor in the Faculty of Education, Misrat University, Misrat in Libya, in the year 2009-2011. Also, he was consultant in King Squared University, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, in the academic year 2007-2009. to On his credit, there are n number of publications. His research papers are published in UGC care listed journals like journals of literature and aesthetics. He is a subject expert consultant for HSTTP, which is an initiative of SE, SCERT Kerala. He is also working as a member of Kerala State Panel of Translators in English and Hindi for Kerala Niyam Sabha. Dr. Anej Somraj area of interest is English language teaching, science fiction, machine culture, HR training solutions, curriculum design, and content development. Also, his area of interest is content curation across diverse mediums platforms. So this diverse personality is with us. Uh, he is eminent speaker, uh, Dr. Somraj, sir. Now, today is going to deliver his lecture on the topic AI or not to AI leveling the playing field in an ELT that is English language teaching classroom. So, from the behalf of the coordination committee of LTI, I welcome Dr. Somraj, sir, wholeheartedly, and I request a respected honorable Dr. N.H. Somraj, sir, to proceed further. Please, sir, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Santosh and uh, Dr. Ashwin Rajkumar and uh, Mr. Prince at the LTI. It's my great pleasure to have a chance to interact with uh, so many aficionados of English language and literature. And um, I know that today um, all of us are gathered here to talk about um, uh, AI and its impact today. Uh, AI has been around for a consistent period of time, and it opens up various uh, avenues for future. And in many ways, uh, it's all about what we are going to see now very quickly, and it's already here amongst us. 
So uh, I think uh, we will just, without much ado, ado, we'll get into our area. Uh, so before we get into um, the details, uh, I'll just make it uh, um, a kind of a plan on what uh, we are going to do today. So we'll start off with uh, the idea about uh, there were just the rudimentary basics on what is AI and what is that we understand from AI and what is this particular um, general service technology uh, that is actually having the potential to change uh, the way we see the world and then move on to the aspects about what goes into uh, creating uh, AI and uh, what are the methods being used and then move into the areas about what are the implications of such technology being used. So um, to begin with, AI is actually, you know, starting with the, um, I think the um, public came to be aware of what uh, AI is and so on with the emergence of chat GPT. And uh, it started off as coming that, okay, currently we have a problem where students will be able to do their assignments using chat GPT and uh, the um, entire academia started looking at this as a major uh, upheaval and a disruption that was going to come in. So what exactly is this um, particular product being looked at? So it starts with the open AI. That's a company that was, uh, you know, that is in the forefront of developing this particular technology at that point of time. And it's a, a way of developing an advanced artificial intelligence technique. And what this does is that uh, you already had systems in place where uh, responses from the computers and the programming could be uh, leading to certain respond, uh, products. For example, you all had Siri or Cortana and the others, which were personal digital assistants. Now, they have been around for quite some time. And uh, uh, the, what they did was basically that if you gave them certain questions, they could respond to that. So you know, sort of starting from like asking the time, the weather, and so on. Uh, generally, um, and, and the questions which required a very minimal level of computing and so on, and, and kind of an interface between them. Now, when we look into the details, um, you know, what does actually uh, uh, AI do? You know, in this case, it's actually at the very basics, um, it's just a way to generate answers to a wide range of questions. Uh, it's very quick and it's surprisingly very accurate. And uh, the danger of the point is that it has been getting better with every single thing. Now, where does um, this particular technology find applications? You know, it starts from the, the basics about that computer, the customer support, uh, you know, whether you are in Amazon, Flipkart, or any of the platforms, e-commerce platforms, you will see that there's always a bot that is there 24 seven, ready to answer your queries, but in a limited kind of way. Um, it can be used for language translation. It can be used for uh, creative writing and a whole range of uh, areas. And that's what makes this uh, so powerful and also impactful. Now, um, uh, recently we just had uh, lots of news coming up on AI. Uh, the news today was actually uh, this particular one that uh, was there today. Uh, I'll just um, share this particular news um, uh, that has been just, uh, just coming up. Uh, let's just see. Okay, this is uh, the news from Euronews, and uh, let's just see this clipping now. Yes, a vibrant pink-haired fitness enthusiast from Barcelona. But here's the catch: she's not a real person. Instead, the agency uses a combination of AI technology, including generative AI, along with the expertise of design professionals who work their magic in Photoshop. The result: Aitana Lopez a virtual model with over 121,000 followers on Instagram. Now, don't be fooled. Despite her massive following and thirsty comments from admirers, Aidna Lopez is not a real human being. The agency meticulously crafts her schedule, decides the places she visits, and uploads photos to maintain the illusion of a real-life model. Talk about dedication. But why venture into this artificial modeling world? Ruben Cruz, the founder of The Clueless, explains that the project arose from a need to overcome challenges faced by traditional models and influencers. From projects being put on hold to the high costs associated with working with well-known personalities like Kim Kardashian, Cruz saw an opportunity to create a more reliable and cost-effective solution. It seems that the Clueless is onto something here. By utilizing AI models, 
They hope to bring down market prices, benefiting smaller companies that cannot afford extensive advertising campaigns. Additionally, the agency aims to address the issue of relying on real-life influencers who may have egos or sudden changes in availability. Smart move, I must say. But let's not forget the big question, can these AI models actually generate income? Well, according to the Clueless, Aidna Lopez brings in an average of your 3, 0 every month. Impressive, right? So impressive, in fact, that the agency has created a second AI model, Maya Lima, a young Argentine girl characterized by her shyness and purity. It's fascinating to see how this technology is shaping the modeling industry. While some may argue that it threatens the livelihoods of real models, others see it as an opportunity for innovation and accessibility. So, what do you think, lovely? So coming back, um, this is just a news that this business is developing, and it's about um, you know the AI taking on different roles. So I think uh, some of the uh, ways that it would change also would be quite drastic. So coming back, um, um, how does this operate? Uh, when you look at the evolution of AI, uh, you'll see that it goes through several stages. And um, the stage when we discussed, like for example, Siri, Alexa, or Cortana, these are the ones which we call a narrow AI, or let's say artificial narrow intelligence, where the uh, questions and the parameters are largely controlled, and its responses start from like saying, um, asking it to schedule a meeting, to fix your timetables, and or uh, doing sort of things. But um, this has rapidly been changing, and currently uh, the AI uh, technology is on stage two, where it's a artificial general intelligence, where the machine is able to progress uh, in terms of the uh, areas that is able to address and also able to look at what things can be generated and so on. Uh, but it's only a matter of time before before the AGI or the general uh, intelligence moves on to the, the level of what we call the um, AI super, all right, the super AI, which is the artificial super intelligence where the machine or the, the, the system is able to become um, conscious of itself or rather it becomes self-aware. Now, um, when we talk about AI, there are a lot of things that come and go. And uh, for a moment, we will just uh, look into uh, the... Sorry about that. Yeah, so we'll just look into the segment where you'd have uh, what happens actually with AI. So there are these uh, technical points, point views that we will try to look into. Um, AI can be defined as um, the um, um, a kind of programming cover or a computing power, which is something like a five-year-old. It's possible that uh, uh, it has it has all the ability of reasoning and logic as much as a five-year-old. Now, um, very quickly, um, let's just look into the magic behind the. Uh, project by the way which it generates responses and for a moment we will just look at chat gpt and the way it functions the, the magic behind that actually is in the form of the the process flow that it has created so um there were responses that could be created from computers for a long time and uh, they had a very li strict limitation they function primarily in terms of binaries and zeros and ones they still do the same but the difference is the complexities that they have been able to bring into it so the first step is actually we call the pre-processing, where the, um, the software starts looking at the parameters that are set. So depending upon the prompts that are given in, uh, it started starts looking at the, uh, the requirements and then starts allocating the resources accordingly. Then it goes through the process of an encoding, where it starts looking at what would be suitable within the context and what's the subtext. And on the basis of its analysis of the possible subtext, it then goes for the process of decoding. And after the decoding process, it then goes onto the uh, system or the mechanism of text generation. And eventually, uh, there is a post-processing where uh, we, after which we get the results. Now, the best part is the sheer speed by which this process could be done. Uh, um, when you're talking about Cortana or Siri, they did the same process, uh, but not in the same complexity or the speed. So what happens is like, even imagine if there is a 
AI uh, that tool that you're using for generating a PowerPoint for a particular uh, talk. Uh, what you would need for that may be less than maybe two minutes or maybe or one minute so actually. So um, what does it do really? So uh, it's like having an enormous library at your access and um, every time that you access the library, you are able to understand things better and uh, the next time you do it much more, um, let's say, sophisticated manner. Uh, so what happens is uh, every single time you ask it a question, it learns from that. And slowly after a point of time, uh, it manages to be able to work around that. So there are uh, lots of lots of possibilities that it uh, does in a way. Now, when we come to the uh, part about um, how fast do they learn, it's primarily because of the, uh, the resources that are available. Uh, most of the AI tools that are available, they are still behind paywalls and uh, um, they are becoming more and more affordable. That's one of the reasons why they are uh, being made uh, possible. But what's happening is that the rate at which it's being adopted, that's changing a lot of things. Right, so um, when we look at the uh, point of uh, um, AI and uh, how we're going to look at AI, there are a lot of questions about uh, AI and uh, what it means for us. Like, is it a hero or a villain? Is it good or bad for us? Uh, should we stop AI? Uh, there have been numerous discussions on actually uh, asking for legislation to control AI. So we have extremes happening. Uh, for example, on one side, you have uh, uh, someone like Elon Musk uh, asking for uh, uh, bringing in strong legislation which can prevent AI, which can, you know, even as they put it, uh, be responsible for destroying every single thing that we know. So that is one fine side of that. The other part is about um, people like Mark Zuckerberg and others saying that, well, why don't we allow AI to come in and um, it cannot be a threat because it can only do what it is asked to do. So it's that's a different perspective where they talk in terms of the, the positive aspect where they're saying that um, even nuclear weapons are not harmful uh, as long as you don't use them. So it's all about uh, the positives and the negatives of AI. Uh, it's like two sides of a coin and it's all about how we decide to use them and what we are going to do with them. So that's the real crux of the matter. So um, uh, for a begin to begin with, like, I just like to look into how is that AI can really be effective or what are the the best things about AI. Why do we think that there is a future for the AI? One uh, extreme instance is the improved efficiency. I like uh, the particular um, news that we saw, uh, it helps to run things very systematically and efficiently, and it's highly cost effective. Imagine like trying to uh, generate the um, um, a kind of a report for an entire day, or for let's say 50 or 100 students. Uh, it can take a lot of time and effort, and it may not be very productive. So AI comes in with uh, a very improved way of uh, having uh, results delivered uh, easily and very, very quickly. Next is the part about the customer service. Like I said, AI finds an application in um, a variety of ways where it's very customer centric. Imagine a customer, as a customer, if you are made a purchase uh, maybe at 12 p.m., and you suddenly decide that uh, you want to know which color it is or if you can you change it, customize it at some point, or you want to cancel the order. Now, normally, uh, most companies would not have uh, a 24 hour uh, customer service running, but AI does not uh, is not affected by that. It can work any number of times around the clock, 365 days a year, not affected at all. So the advantage is that uh, it helps you to have better connect with the customers. I'm sure that as teachers, you would always have experience where the students come with the queries and questions, maybe at the wrong time, you know? So um, AI actually could be a solution to that. For example, it can help students answer their answer students' questions and do those things uh, to some extent. And there is a greater feeling that uh, their wants and requirements are met. Um, it helps to improve the creativity that you have in a classroom. Uh, suppose uh, we have a chance to think about a certain idea, but we're not very sure how it may actually work out in the classroom. So um, AI provides a kind of a sandbox 
where you can easily try out your ideas and concepts and you can try it out. Like, um, um, see, if you're thinking about a lecture and you are flipping a classroom, uh, imagine that um, you are not very sure how the students would respond to it. It's possible that you can use AI to function as a, um, a model student on which you can give questions and see how they respond to it. Uh, so that's an advantage that it brings into it. And of course, there is a great part of automation that is possible. The advanced automation is uh, something that AI does very well. For example, um, as teachers, we all know that taking attendance in classrooms takes a significant part of the uh, hourly lecture that we get. So um, uh, automation of those things is something that can be done very efficiently. For example, um, before the class um, on WhatsApp, the students can be sent a puzzle, which they solve and they get in. And uh, the clue to that actually is only possible once they come to the classroom. So uh, they listen to the question, the pointers or the clues in the classroom, and they can mark their attendance. So you never have to spend time taking attendance. So that's the uh, possibility of uh, advanced automation. Well, while all these things are true, there is also the possibility of actually uh, grave concern for many. That's about job loss. Uh, this is actually a, a um, hard part of reality where there is a possibility of job loss, uh, but then what kind of a job loss is a question. Um, because AI ensures that things can be done mechanically very quickly uh, by a very, in a lim very limited number of resources and with great, excellent accuracy, there's a possibility that it can lead to job losses. But uh, what kind of job loss is definitely something which we really need to consider because um, you will have AI replacing people with other people who actually would be using AI tools and they would be coming in place. I know that this has been a, a regular question that comes up, but uh, there is still a lot to talk about that. Uh, next is the problem with the biases that come through. There are several biases that AI can be uh, guilty of, and uh, uh, accuracy is never its uh, forte. The reason for that is that AI operates primarily on the basis of what is given to it. And, uh, um, uh, software technology, there's something called GIGO, that is garbage in, garbage out. So you need to give it a wrong data, the wrong end, uh, output is going to come out of it. So wrong inputs, it lead to wrong outputs. So there are various uh, different serious concerns uh, which come up as a part of the uh, biases and inaccuracies that it is capable of. But then, um, like I said, it's still in the evolving stage. There is so much more to come from AI. And uh, by the time it moves to stage three, these biases and things would um, become much pronounced and maybe we will have better results. Now, when we look at the greater aspects, so uh, next part is about the aspects of um, the dependence of technology in terms of how is it that uh, technology would be uh, really uh, creating a sense of dependence where there is no way out of it. We would probably not be able to function without technology in any way. So these are some of the uh, real uh, problems that could come up from the uh, negative impact of AI, but they're still need to be taken up. So um, let's just see some of the ways in which uh, AI can operate. Now, uh, uh, one of the first in, uh, inroads that it made was in terms of the generation of images. Now, um, I'm sure you have uh, got a couple of uh, WhatsApp forwards uh, which talked about actually how would uh, the popular cricketers of the day look as toddlers and so on. So these are some of the um, fun ways that we can use in a real classroom because to get the attention span of the uh, learners of today, it's always a good starter to have some of these uh, aspects. Now, um, the advantage that uh, AI brings to a like language classroom is also in terms of uh, bringing in something like history into a classroom, uh, trying to bring in interest in terms of various uh, points of history. Now, history doesn't just always have the ability to uh, interest students, but um, AI has a very good solution 
Now here, for example, you have a couple of uh, historical figures being generated by AI, but I know there are a huge amount of um, controversies and uh, questions being raised about the legitimacy of these uh, images. Uh, like for example, there are a lot of questions about why is it that the AI generated Akbar is so different from the Akbar that is generally seen in the paintings and of the particular period, uh, or even questions like uh, why is Emperor Ashoka uh, so lean uh, compared to the others? And of course, there are the, there was the uh, there were extensive um, you know debates and arguments about uh, how could uh, you know uh, Maharaj, Shivaji Maharaj be something like this and so on. But like I said, um, these are all things which are still open to debate. There are lots and lots of questions to be answered about them, and they are far, far from perfect. But still, there is a lot that we can do with these. Of course, um, uh, this was another uh, set of images that were generated by AI, where you had uh, Indian states uh, uh, being generated uh, on uh, uh, images of couples from these states being generated. And um, there are huge uh, uproar and uh, controversies regarding these and major questions being raised about them. There was a question about the kind of biases and the racial prejudice that comes along with that. Um, like I said, um, there are numerous faults and follies that can come through that. In many cases, there are massive fails. Like, for example, this is a, that of a Bengali couple as generated by an AI. And uh, here, for example, you notice that the picture of uh, the, the woman having uh, almost seven, uh, more than five fingers, and uh, her hand is typically inside the fish. And the question was also about uh, how can a hilsa fish be so big? Uh, and, and the various other questions that uh, come into that. So AI does have its faults. And uh, in many cases, it can fall really badly. So um, why we can say that everything has two sides, um, but there's still much more to be seen about that. Now, um, I'll just come back to the point where uh, the, we would be looking into the um, whether to AI or not to AI, the kind of challenges that it poses for us and uh, what it can mean for us. So if you look at the um, uh, picture here, uh, we could see that um, um, there are uh, numerous benefits that come as a result of the higher education in automation in higher education. Uh, we'll just see some of those aspects. Now, one is that uh, the question that we already looked at is in terms of whether uh, the teachers would be replaced. Uh, well, that's a question I'm sure that uh, we would probably be doing much better in the point when we have a discussion towards the end. But there's a lot part it does in terms of the empowering of knowledge. Uh, it ensures that we can have a system where uh, knowledge sharing becomes far more democratic and uh, it becomes more decentralized. It helps to nurture talent to a great extent. And um, it also helps us to identify talent in a major way. Now, one of the things that uh, I've been trying to do in terms of the uh, ELT classroom is actually to identify the ways in which the students would be having a flair for language. And at the same time, trying to know where are the lacuna or in which areas are they lagging behind. Now, the advantage of that is that it helps to boost the productivity. Now, boosting productivity is in terms of the, the process of a part about the automation of their details and uh, how is it, for example, uh, we, do, we can onboard the entire students. Uh, now, usually we know that at the beginning of the year, there's a lot of process where we have to spend a lot of time actually preparing the portfolios of every single student. Now, AI can give a remarkable um, way to automate the whole thing and it can be done in a very short point of time. The second part it does is about actually uh, ensuring that the workflow is done, designed in such a way that it avoids repetitions and there's a smoother flow. And it helps, uh, thirdly, it helps the faculty to focus on the research and education so that we can focus on the creative aspects of the classroom. And lastly, I believe that um, in addition to saving time and money, 
it helps to improve the student experience. Now, um, I know that there are a lot of questions about um, what tools are there. Are they, uh, can they really be used quickly? Are there ready-made tools which are there and so on? Now, here are a couple of tools that I've been using in, a, in my language teaching classroom. Uh, one is what we would call the warmest. Uh, it's an email writing assistant, and uh, it's, it helps to tutor the uh, email writers who are just coming in. So for example, in the first year students, we help uh, get them to use um, you know, warmest to actually try to learn how to write emails. And uh, uh, the entire process is um, helps them to understand different forms. It helps them to um, get, understand the facets like the tone, diction, register, and those aspects. So there is always a, a kind of a, a teaching assistant uh, that the platform provides, which makes it um, far more interesting. Um, the second one tool that we've been using is called Roam Around AI. Uh, it's, it's an AI powered tour planner. Now, Roam Around is actually something which helps students to generate an itinerary. Now, it's very different to difficult to get students to start working on, uh, you know, uh, planning an itinerary uh, and preparing uh, uh, a program around that. So that's where uh, we found that Roam Around AI has a great influence on that and uh, it helps them to design an itinerary uh, by giving, they can just type in the places, it generates the things of interest, it points out what are the things that can be done, what are the methods that can be adopted and so on. Uh, next is the uh, part about Qtify AI. Qtify uh, AI is actually a way that we help students with their writing skills. I know that um, you know there are a lot of people who appreciate a good quote in the right place, uh, but many students sometimes uh, fail to identify the context where they can be used and how they can be used. So that is where actually um, Qtify AI works, where um, it helps you to identify the right code according to the context and then use them according to uh, those situations. Now, um, when we look at uh, um, AI, uh, one of the advantages is that when you're talking about the weak learners, uh, those who are very reticent and shy to actually be able to uh, use them, uh, we found that using digital um, Yes, Ms. Falguni had a query in this point. Uh, yes, I'll come to that too. Uh, we found that many students actually have a limitation when they speak. They are reluctant to speak uh, in, in public or in a classroom. So how do we do that? So we actually found uh, that there are a lot of things that can be done. TIG AI is one such example. Um, imagine that um, a student who is quite weak because he's worried that his pronunciation uh, does not match the accepted standards. Uh, if instead of correcting him, he gets the a digital twin who actually is uh, having the same level as him, and he has to mentor that particular AI twin to actually speak and so on. So instead of making him a student, you suddenly take him in the role of a mentor and supporter. So here, AI tool, uh, for example, is um, a Twig AI. It makes it possible that you can they will provide the support to actually give them the right words to use in a context, the right pronunciation, and so on. So all this actually is something that would really help them out. So Twig AI uh, is something that would, it's very useful to have. Um, next is the part where it's always good to have a graded evolution. Now, when I say graded, uh, it needs to um, look into the fact that a learner is never static. He keeps moving. He keeps or she keeps progressing in bits and pieces. So it's very important that there should be a high amount of uh, uh, motivational support to ensure that they continue with the progress. So that's where Spico AI comes in. Uh, Spico AI actually helps them to actually, um, uh, uh, they could give them a text to actually announce and read out. And when it does, the uh, AI looks at the uh, kind of points where the, it looks at the, the measuring points and the rubrics and in comparison with the rubric, it gives it a rating. For example, it says a good pace or a bad pace. Uh, it says that, okay, you need to speed up, but you, you can do this. You are doing much better. I, and you're progressing really quite well. So um, AI can take on the role of a individualized, customized kind of a training support. 
Um, now, in the classroom, we will have students from different backgrounds. So sometimes we have students coming from fine arts. We have some students coming from other other disciplines. So uh, one of the things that is about uh, getting the attention of the learners today is a major challenge. I'm sure that uh, uh, all of you, um, uh, or rather, I would like to know what all of you would think about uh, the attention span of students. How attentive are our students? How long do you think that we are able to keep their attention? You start a lecture. How long do you think they remain attentive? You can use a chat box and uh, let me know about uh, you know how much of uh, uh, um, time you can retain their attention. Twenty-five, thirty, twenty, fifteen. Right. Okay. Uh, students do zoom very fast. Yes. Fifty seconds. <laughs> okay. Yes. Sure. Sure. Two minutes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Twenty. Twenty-five minutes. Okay. I am. Well. Um. What we have seen is that the post-pandemic crowd, especially those who were in the, the plus two at that point of time during the pandemic, the COVID times. Uh, their attention span has been drastically affected. In fact, uh, yeah, we put it around uh, what uh, Ms. Bina had said at around 15 minutes or so. Uh, we can't get it more than that. They are too distracted. So um, one of the things that we found uh, as it has been, yes, uh, Professor Ambath, you're true. COVID does, uh, did definitely impact it, and we are seeing the impact now. And uh, what we see now is actually that um, we need to have better ways to bring their attentions and get them to work on that. So um, if you look at the uh, Reimagine AI, it's a tool that makes it possible for um, a, you can take a picture and uh, upload the same, and you can give uh, it the AI to come up with new versions of that. So for example, remodeling your entire house, how do you think that you want to define your space? How is it that you want to actually make additions and changes in the same? So all this is possible with Reimagine uh, um, uh, AI, which actually you take a picture of a room and uh, give it the parameters, it will start recreating in different forms. And it can also be something that makes it um, very, very affordable. Earlier, if you wanted to generate a 3D image of a, a house, for example, a flat or a, a house, for example, it would cost you around 15 to 20,000 or more. But the, uh, today, the uh, I remember, like for example, when I wanted to design my put in my uh, apartment, uh, I had actually got an engineer to, to do that and had worked with the 3D team. They charged me around twenty thousand to actually just give me a few pictures, which are again two side two D pictures of these of these new rooms. But um, today, um, there is so much possible that uh, it's only been less than a year. But today, actually, the entire thing you just have to take the picture of an empty room. You can take uh, up to six different shots, upload the same, and it reimagines in a new way altogether. So, in fact, uh, we had a lots of fun in the classroom with actually using reimagine to say that, okay, how do you think a classroom should be like? How do you think we do need to have that? So, we had students actually come up with a, uh, a Harry Potter kind of uh, classrooms, and uh, we also had people with the BTS classroom and so on. So, these are all the things which help to. Uh, get these students' interest in that and uh, opens up far, far new interest. So the best part is that I found that the these classrooms with AI, they become far more interesting. The students are happier. They are, they are very loud, but I think that's an indication of the fact that they are really into it. And uh, yes, Conjure is, uh, AI is something which was quite uh, interesting. In fact, they, it just took us to very, very... Uh, uncharted areas. Uh, so, for example, uh, it's like an AI wherein you can walk into a library and you can ask questions that uh, uh, the uh, AI tries to give you answer. For example, like does Harry Potter suffer from Oedipus complex? Or, for example, um, did Hermione have a secret affection for Harry Potter? Any of these questions. So, um, um, Conjure AI still needs to uh, come a long way, but uh, it actually helps to bring reading closer to most students. But it's been our experience that after a few sessions of actually using Conjure AI, many of them, uh, at least a um, you know, good number of them, did go back to at least read the books. Whether they completed the books, 
<laughs> that's a different thing altogether. But uh, it could get people to actually read books. So I think that's a fairly uh, good thing for an AI. Um, next is actually we see that there's a lot of students who are interested in the careers. I think for many today, uh, it's a major uh, point of interest. Uh, it's about uh, what is it that you can do as a part-time career or I can go as a full-time career. So blogging or content creation is a major uh, you know, area that has been in demand. Even the remotest parts of the country, you'll find that there are demands for blogs and also for online content. So um, there's a possibility that uh, we can use uh, AI for that. Marmof AI is one such one, which helps people to write blogs. So you can see as in the screenshot over here, um, it uh, gives you the pointers to, uh, and also the kind of a template on which you can add to it. And uh, um, it can generate uh, up to three pages of AI. And um, uh, it's like 5,000 word limit for a month. And it's for free. And that's the advantage that it has compared to the other blogging um, AI, um, AI blogging sites. Um, next is that um, I happen to teach a lot of students who are from the science background and also from the logistics background. So what happens is that there's a lot they have to read. And uh, uh, reading is not always something that they're able to do very comfortably. So you'll realize that uh, for many, uh, reading can be a problem. Um, um, uh, it could be in terms of uh, they find that um, um, AI help can help them to become better readers. I know that um, usually there's a lot of misconception that reading is to be done as reading aloud, but uh, I have found that it has got minimal uh, improvements or it is hardly of any use. Sorry, I know there are uh, many teachers who believe that uh, uh, reading aloud is the way to go. But um, you know what happens is that the problems of reading errors and repeating it is very high. So I generally don't recommend that. But um, the in terms of skimming and scanning, uh, I think that the um, AI can be a good support. So Textify AI, for example, it helps you to read and actually uh, imagine giving a 500 page or a 40 page kind of a thing to them. So uh, Textify AI can, uh, can read the whole thing and give you the uh, summary of that and uh, uh, the long summary, the executive summary, the different versions of that. But um, essentially, it helps them to understand what they are uh, going to read about and then uh, it can possibly help them to read better. So that's Textify. Now, um, uh, Open Read is another one, which is uh, very good as far as the scientific papers are concerned. So if you want them to read um, uh, scientific papers and all that, uh, the language, the register, the tone may be a bit uh, kind of uh, uh, challenging for many. So in those circumstances, it's always easy to let them go through those things through an intermediary. The via intermediary ensures that they read it much more confidently and comfortably. So uh, open read AI is something that helps them to, you know, and it reads it and then uh, translates the same into figures or um, uh, abstracts and it even gives you a paper digest. Of course, um, there is also the part about uh, writing tutor. Now, one area which um, as teachers we quite find quite challenging is to be able to be with them to a writing class, for example. You know, uh, if you have a class of like 50 to 70 that I have, uh, uh, ensuring that uh, they all have the support of a writing uh, tutor is difficult. So co-writer AI is something which is quite handy. What we do is uh, in my class, I have a fifth classroom where uh, a week before the class, I share the content, uh, the modules, uh, the videos, uh, the audio files. Uh, and then uh, on that given day, we all get into the co-writing AI platform and they all try to start writing. So they get the support of AI in these times and it's all accessible on a mobile itself. So when they start writing, the AI would start giving them prompts on, okay, what could they be writing next? Uh, how to structure their ideas, how to generate ideas. It provides spidograms for the purpose, kind of things. Um, so just to just uh, round up all the kind of uh, things that I found, uh, these are the major advantages of uh, higher uh, the automation or AI in higher education. Um, it reduces a lot of paper use and uh, it helps to bring about greater sustainability. Um, uh, it allows us to focus on what is the core area. Now, for example, if, my, if I have a class um, coming up on Wednesday, 
I know that these are the students. There are 12 of them who have a problem with the pronunciation. There are 18 of them who have a problem with syntax. So it's very easy to grade them. And thanks to AI, we are able to sort them out much faster. And uh, uh, that's all because of the onboarding process uh, when we were brought in. Using AI to onboard them actually uh, helps to uh, uh, arrange these data about them in much organized way. Uh, maybe uh, if there is some questions, I can maybe explain that a little later. So um, that's the wrong tracks of uh, the few things that I have found quite exciting in my classroom. And um, I found AI to be quite yeah, handy. It has been uh, very supportive uh, to actually uh, teach in a when you have a large uh, classroom or when your students come coming from different backgrounds. Uh, students coming from the regional medium uh, to students uh, having uh, various learning disabilities. Uh, so so uh, in my experience, it has been uh, very, very uh, positive. And uh, the challenges, yes, there are ethical issues and some problems, but I'm sure uh, there is uh, a lot that uh, is still to come up. So I'll be glad if there are any questions that then I could answer with that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, very wonderful uh, speech. And uh, see, this, this is the area. This is very thought provoking. And uh, the participants uh, in the webinar, they are going to be benefited as we are going to see in the chat box. There are some questions. Uh, I will read out the first question regarding this uh, webinar. That is, how could we learn to include AI usefully in our English teaching? Okay, yeah, like I said, um, there are these tools that we already have discussed. Um, um, uh, so these tools can be used anywhere. And the best part about these tools is that um, these tools will get better. Now, we can use textbooks and materials, but then they are all static. They don't change. The biggest advantage that we have is the fact that they keep evolving. So each time, let's say 50 students get in, the next time you log in, you will have the advantage that the AI will have learned from that. So that makes it significantly uh, very, very um, progressive. And uh, it helps to, yeah, there's another question on grammar, spell check, and students' notebooks. Yes, there are a few of them uh, which are there, but then they do have some challenges in terms of actually um, limitation how much you upload them. But uh, it would be possible that you can use Mentry and the others to some extent to curtail them. The input, if you can curtail them and keep them online itself, it is much easier. That can be done. And I think there are some questions on uh, okay, AI for grammar and in classrooms. OK. Yeah, uh, see, uh, one of the things that we do for AI is actually, um, if I can just share this. Uh, there is, um, this is, I hope it's open. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, there is Lexica. Uh, this is actually quite useful in us to help generate um, images that can be useful for a writing prompt. So, you can see that it can generate images. The students' pictures can be taken, and uh, with the permission, you can actually use them to generate uh, images which are funny images or funky type and so on, and get them to start writing about that. So as a writing prompt, they, get, they are very, very handy. Uh, they make a lot of uh, options available to them. And also um, uh, helps them to think or imagine much more creatively. So this is some of the uh, uh, things, that, this is one side which I've been using. And um, the other side which could be taken, that could be of a, which we've been using uh, is um, uh, Kumata, Kumata AI. Uh, the, uh, AI is actually, um, uh, actually, it makes possible that you it can uh, help you to generate uh, um, responses on the basis of what you give it to it and independently as well. So these are some advantages which it can do. So for example, you can give it to uh, entire articles and it can uh, optimize them and come in a much more shorter form. And um, so instead of getting them to read the whole thing, they can look at the, the more uh, shortened form of that. So it's quite handy. There can be more discussions based on that. And um, you also have uh, something called Kaiba. 
uh, where you can it's a video generator uh, it's possible that you can actually take the students a chance to uh, upload some of the videos and generate the whole thing in a different one for example the students in your classroom uh, what would it be how would it be that you have chandrayaan 5 and you are an astronaut, astronaut on that it can generate all those uh, images and so on so the kyber is something that can be very very handy to work on and uh, there is also uh, the tool which we have been using uh, is actually called mid journey uh, mid journey again helps us to uh, work on the uh, creative aspects of students uh, especially with blogging and, and others uh, we have tried in where uh, we have used this actually to help them to create new menus so what we did is actually to ask them to find a, a, a cuisine which is unique to their place so we have students from different parts of kerala come up with different cuisines and then uh, attempts to um, you know uh, write about that also uh, have um, a video description of the same this could be the kind of uh, things that come up with that um okay um yeah and i think one of the role was what's the role of a teacher doing the ai world does it affect employability yes i was waiting for that question to come up thank you mr prashad yeah yes there is a part like i said um the employability um would be there uh the question is that uh, employability would be a question but then like i said um ai will actually replace people with other people who know how to use ai because that's the way things are going to be um it's like it's like having so much potential and why should it be used actually so that's the advantage that uh, this brings to you so there is um uh, all about adopting it and um, it gives us uh, so much of ability also uh, in fact um, uh, there were a lot of questions uh, um, about um, whether the uh, the present uh, social media platforms they have a lot of problems like cyber bullying and uh, also uh, about how these are unsafe environments and uh, there are questions about whether these uh, things can be given to students and how safe are they uh, so um, i've been working with some of my students and uh, uh, we have been trying out uh, one, uh, one particular uh, ai controlled uh, site um, where uh, you don't have to worry about the student safety um, if we have a few minutes i can just quickly talk about wilder uh, which is a social media platform which is ai moderated and uh, it's a truly positive and non-toxic uh, social network. It's for real people with real stories. So no toxicity, no trolling, no abuse. Um, so uh, this is just a, a AI moderated uh, platform. It talks about creating challenges, keeping it engaging. It talks about health, fitness, awareness, uh, learning, spirituality, all those things. And uh, the AI ensures that uh, uh, the um, that Wilder is immense space which is troll free and there is no cyber bullying. So this is, and it also makes it possible to be sustainable by offering an option of monetization. So uh, these are some of the advantages of uh, AI moderated uh, social media platforms. Um, I'm just I'm, uh, saying that there are so many options available. The question is about uh, what do you want to uh, work on and how it can be done. All right. Um, the more questions over there was like, okay, improve Ms. Shanti's question on improving communication, speaking from AI. Yes, uh, like I mentioned, there are these uh, options which help us to do that. And uh, um, yeah, for example, the, um, the couple of um, AI I mentioned, uh, speech, for example, it helps you to improve that. Uh, we are in Bridget's uh, audience, the rules mentioned. Uh, uh, in feedback from players, okay, right. So, um, yes, um, and the question about whether more training can be provided, um, sure, yes, um, I'm sure uh, LTI can uh, arrange for uh, such requirements if there are sufficient requirements. I LTI might consider them, and yes, I'm sure, um, and I'll be glad to assist in any way possible uh, for an AI. Um, uh, training on how we can use them and so on uh, i can just uh, i don't know if i have really overstepping the time 
but I can just show you the couple of things that we use. Now, this is uh, um, uh, the my work platform on uh, Po, which is another uh, um, AI tool that we use. So I'm based in Kuchin in Kerala. So um, this is where uh, I have uh, uh, responses like um, I have created a boat. It's called Boat Kuchi Karan, means the boat from Kuchi. And uh, uh, I have been able to uh, get it to make responses. And uh, you can train it. So for example, like uh, there are places to eat. So um, I, I, would, I can ask it to look up on the Google map, identify the places, triangulate the best cuisines, and uh, then uh, generate uh, a kind of a, um, a blog on what uh, you can uh, eat if you're a visitor coming the first time to that, or something on what are the kind of uh, uh, schools that are available and what are they known for. Now, uh, what is interesting is the fact that uh, uh, it responses responds even in the local language. So for example, here, um, uh, I use certain terms which are very uh, local, like machana is like buddy, which is again in Malayalam. Uh, so uh, it responds in, in, in response uh, into that. So it then uh, even starts composing poetry, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, it is there. For example, I asked it, uh, about, for example, authentic Punjabi food that is available in Kochi. So it then says, okay, try the sarsonga saag, makay roti. So what it is doing is actually it is going by what people have been posting on um, um, uh, Swiggy and uh, other food aggregator platforms. And based on the responses, it is creating responses. And, um, uh, you know, it can even do things like uh, uh, even answer questions which are in the um, let's say they have a realm like, for example, GST. Do you pay taxes? Do you have to pay taxes? How much does it come to? And all that. So it can answer those questions as well. So even if it's a, uh, the, uh, you have a classroom where students are not familiar with uh, uh, English, but they are familiar with areas like BCom or accounting, it's possible that you can try many new things with them. So as a teacher, you also get a chance to learn many things from the bot. So that's the uh, kind of interesting things that uh, it uh, provides. And uh, that's there. And I think uh, the platform is called PO. It's called AI PO, P O E. Uh, it's uh, based on an earlier um, user interface called Cora. And uh, uh, from that, you have an AI being produced now. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful session. Uh, Ashwin, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for the wonderful session. Uh, Ashwin, sir, can you conclude? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Ani, sir, for a wonderful session that you have conducted today. And all the participants, as I am going through the messages in the chat box, they are satisfied and they are uh, saying that this is the session is really thought provoking as the AI is a very challenging area. And uh, there, the uh, the teaching fraternity is going to have the benefits, and uh, they it is also very helpful for the teachers to use the AI in their teaching, learning, and evaluation process. Also, uh, so on behalf of English Language Teachers Association, uh, I'm very thankful to Anesh sir for this uh, wonderful session. The next session, next webinar is of on 17th December 2023, on the same time, that is 4.30 p.m., the topic of the next webinar, that is 117th webinar, is of exploring teachers' perspectives and experiences. The resource person for this uh, webinar is Dr. Pornali Guyan. She is a professor in the Royal School of Languages, Department of English, the Assam Royal Global University and the moderator is Nayan Jyoti Hazarika and the host is Dr. Ramkishan Bise. So uh, for this today's uh, webinar, I am thankful to once again Anesh sir, the uh, moderator, uh, Honorable Dr. Santosh Chauthaiwale sir and also uh, very thankful to the ELTI for assigning the, uh, the duty to conduct today's 
116th uh, webinar which is on very interesting topic that is the uh, ai artificial intelligence so thank you once again uh, and i'm also very thankful to all the participants we have more than 200 participants for this uh, session thank you so much for each and every one thank you very much everyone thank you sir thank you so much uh, participants kindly fill the feedback form provided in the chat box and you can also register for the next webinar it is provided in the chat box thank you so much for your participation so you can leave the chat if you have filled the feedback form and thank, sir, you, thank, thank you so much. thank you sir thank you, sir. Thank 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 you. you so much for thank your you, cooperation thank, thank you, you sir thank you. have a nice time thank you thank you sir